Welcome, my dear Dreadfuls. I'm Nyx, and this is Strange Encounters and Unusual Happenings. And tonight, I want to talk about some of my most profound experiences. Some are small one-offs, and some have shaped my life, and all have made me question the world around me. My first memory is being aware of, well, I guess, being. Then there's awareness of the absolute nothingness before that moment. I can't see color or feel anything. I have no idea of time, so I'm not sure of any amount of time that has passed from that moment until the moment of when I felt the voice say, It's time to go. Then I'm aware of movement. It's a combination of rushing through air and water, though I can't feel the pressure of either, just the motion of very fast movement. I wish I knew a word that could describe this feeling, but I haven't found one yet. Even now, when I remember this, I really don't think of it in words, just feelings so I'm not sure if I'm explaining it in a way that's relatable or understandable. The voice that spoke to me is with me throughout this whole experience. But it's not in any physical form, it's more of an essence. This has been with me for as long as I can remember, this memory. So I'm just putting it out there as unusual. At around age six, I think this next unusual occurrence only happened for a year, because I only remember going to the school that I was enrolled in for that one school year, and the report cards that I found put me in another school for the next year. But anyway, in the backyard of our house, we have a very old swing set, and when I say old, I mean old. It's not aluminum, and I don't think it's steel, although it might be. It looks and feels like an old, pitted, cast-iron pan. The paint is flaky and sharp, and the slide is so tall that my father, who was just at six foot, well, there was no way he could pick me up and put me at the top of it. I remember the incline being so steep that both me and my sister could sit at the bottom of the slide. The end was so long that you never really fell to the ground. And it was a good thing, too, because the end of the slide was torn and rusted. Honestly, I never would have let a kid play on this thing, but I guess that doesn't really matter to this story. And I guess you're also thinking, why is she going on about a slide? Well, it's because I started to lose time when I was outside in the backyard by myself. And most of the time, I was around that old swing set. I remember climbing up the ladder to the slide, reaching the top and seeing a bright flash of light. I always assumed it was the sun glinting on the metal. Then I can't see anything, and the only thing I can feel is the paint flaking off the ladder bars as my hands slide against them. This time I feel myself sliding down the ladder, but it changes direction from event to event. When I can see again, I'm at the bottom of the ladder. Even the times I feel myself sliding up the ladder, I still regain my sight and, I guess myself, at the bottom of the ladder. I'm not dizzy or feel sick. I'm never hurt. My hands aren't even cut from the metal flakes. And also now that I'm older, I really don't think it was the sun I was seeing. These time loss events would happen at different times of the day and in different kinds of weather, but never at night. I don't remember anything like this happening at night. Also, I don't have a history of blacking out, seizures, or any other medical condition where I've lost time, fainted, or passed out. In fact, I've only fainted once in my life, and it was two years ago, so no history of that except, well, this year of weirdness. This is also about the same time I have another strange memory, and this is the one I'm very apprehensive to share. I've only told three people, only three others. 
Now, as I said, I'm around six years old, but understand as you get older, memories from this age are not very clear, and not very many, and even less from earlier ages. For example, I have one memory from the age of three years and about one month. I know this exactly because it's of my father carrying me in the hospital parking lot as my mother was in labor with my sister. He asked me what I wanted, and I answered a brother, which also happens to be the answer I had for my second sister four years later. But I guess that's besides the point. I'm just trying to explain that this next memory I have has some of the same qualities as a memory from when I was six, and not as spotty as a younger memory or a dream. I've never thought of these memories as dreams. I know the difference. I'm going to describe the room and my surroundings first. There is a large, darkened, sunken room. I, I'm not sure how big it is. Against both ends of the room, there are ramps, two levels on both sides. It's kind of a V that leads down into the room. I'm not alone, but I believe I'm the only child in the group. There are around 40 or so people on the bottom landing, and others in line on the ramps to get down to where we are. These people are all dressed in different clothes. The man next to me has on a large brown-looking winter coat and a floppy winter hat. No one is talking or moving. No one is looking around. I'm only slightly interested in these people because there is a being next to me. I can't see the other beings in the room, but there must be at least a couple more, because the one next to me is showing me a window set into the wall, and I can see a few more windows down the wall to my right, where other people are standing. Now before I tell you about my interaction with this being, let me describe what it looks like. It's just a little taller than me, and now you're thinking, huh, okay, it's a gray, but its skin color is not gray. It's more pale than dark. It has no hair that I can see. Its eyes are not huge. They are more almond-shaped and dark, and I don't recall a pupil. Its nose is small, and its mouth and lips are thin. I also don't notice a gender, and I don't recall clothes. I'm not supposed to remember details about this being, just what it wants to show me, what they are showing all of us. The room has a dim, dark orange, reddish glow to it, and the windows have a soft whitish blue light around it, so I can see inside. There is a child suspended in darkness on the inside of the window, and as I look at it and the being, now, I'm going to use the word telepathy here, but I'm not sure what telepathy feels like. This was like a compulsion in my thoughts, that my thoughts were being guided to a conclusion or answer that I wasn't necessarily trying to figure out. Is that telepathy? I don't know. But I was receiving a communication that didn't come from me. So let's go with telepathy. It was telling me that this, meaning the child, is me or mine. I don't really know now what it was talking about because at the time, I didn't understand what it was trying to communicate to me. But as I got older and heard stories of alien encounters and learned about my own biology, I think it was telling me the child was either my child or a clone of me. I think either of those things could be a possibility. Cloning is well within their means if you take into other people's accounts, and seeing as a female has all the eggs she will ever produce in utero, I'm thinking harvesting mine at some point is doable also. I don't recall any kind of experiments or a sense of fear or menacing from them. In fact, I'm very calm and have never looked back on this experience with fear. In fact, I've missed the child over the years. I loved it then, and still feel a family tie even now. Okay, let's move forward a bit. Just after my 13th birthday, I had an experience that really wasn't paranormal, but left me with a few questions nonetheless. It was the middle of the night, and I walked out of my room to go to the kitchen for a drink. 
I'm a night owl, and I hadn't been asleep or even close to going to bed. The living room was lit by a nightlight, so it wasn't totally dark. As I'm walking toward the kitchen, and about three feet from the dining room table, I'm startled. I think in the gloom, I see a smallish alien standing in front of the table chair, and in that split second of seeing that image, and then realizing it's just a white Walmart bag hanging on the chair, in my head, I've gasped and cried, oh God, not again. My question? Why was that my knee-jerk response? Why did I feel shock and think, oh God, not again? And now for a little paranormal. A few months after that, my sister, boyfriend, and I was in a bedroom with the door shut, listening to the radio and doing art stuff, drawing, coloring, and just talking. The radio was just loud enough to hear, so essentially, it was just background noise. Now, I'm not sure how many times the voice broke over the music before we noticed but we all finally looked up at the radio at the same time, and then it said my name again, louder, and we girls started to scream and jumped up for the door. The voice was kind of warbly and increased in volume each time it came through. The music could always be heard just under the voice as it was speaking. I later wondered if a CB could have been interfering with the transmission, but I don't know if a bleed-through would still sound like that. And also, what are the chances of some trucker calling my name over and over at just that moment? Now, as I said, the door to the room was shut, and my sister got there first, but I guess she didn't open the door fast enough, because as I got to the door, I shoved her hands off the door handle and pulled the door open. Unfortunately, to this day, she still says I broke her toe with the door, I tell her next time a voice starts talking to us, over the radio, she should move faster. Oh, and the boyfriend? He would never admit he heard anything, even though I saw him look at the radio. About two years after that, we come to my first apartment. It was an upstairs unit, one bedroom, bath, kitchen, living and dining joined, and a small hall that connected the bedroom and bathroom to the living room. It was a small apartment. But nice. Nothing was broken, wall to wall carpet. What more could a young couple ask for? Now, the problem I had was every night I heard the sound of a long skirt swishing, like the sound of satin or taffeta material. It sounded like someone was pacing back and forth. It got to the point that I had to sleep with a desk fan on high next to my head to drown it out. I never found a reason for the noise and it happened every night we lived there. During this same year, my boyfriend and I were driving down I-44 between Tulsa and a little town called Pryor. It's in the middle of the night, and somewhere between October and December, a very clear night, and a good thing because there are no streetlights down the highway, but the stars and the moon are enough to see by. Anyway, so he is driving, and I'm looking out the window to the right, and... I see a UFO. Now, when I say UFO, I mean just that. I have never seen anything that looks like this before or since. I had him pull over to the shoulder. I roll down my window and watch it slowly pace its way behind the tall hill to my right. Now, the look of this UFO is not typical to the encounters that I've heard before. To me, it looks like two top buns of a hamburger placed bottom to bottom with a soft dim orange light band connecting them in the middle. The light seems to be coming from inside the band as opposed to affixed to the outside of the craft. There is no halo effect or any kind of flare and there is absolutely no noise from it. Now I'm not sure how high up it is but I could see the shape of the top and bottom perfectly, up until it moved out of view behind the hill. After it was gone, we started back on the road. I was so excited to see my first UFO, but I once again couldn't get my boyfriend to even acknowledge we had seen anything. It was like he couldn't even hear me speaking. 
He just drove us home. And now for my favorite encounter. Heavy sarcasm here. A few apartments later, I would hear loud rustling of papers from the living room as I would try to go to sleep. So, of course, I would get up and go see if the AC was blowing on something, pick up everything that could make a noise, and still, when I would go back to lay down, it would start up again. It was driving me crazy. I was also about eight months pregnant and so tired. Then, it happened. As I lay in bed, I can see down the hall into a second bedroom. The bathroom is to the left and the living room entrance to the right. Also, I have a nightlight just outside my door in the hall. And right in between my doorway and the nightlight stands an imp. I don't know what else to call it. It's about three feet tall, completely black, just black small pointed ears, and three fingers and a thumb that ended in points. Now I know this about its hands because it was standing there with its arm up as if waving and greeting, but it never moved. I don't know if the points were nails or not, but I imagine that was the case. Even though it doesn't seem to want to hurt me, I'm still terrified, and I know I can't run. I'm too big, and it's in the way. I close my eyes and cover my head with the blanket, and when I think enough time has passed, I chance a look. It's gone. It's gone, and I'm up and turning on every light in the apartment. We move shortly afterward. As a side note, after my son turned one, he started talking to something he called Shadow. Shadow was everywhere, in windows, mirrors, and just around. Shadow left about a year later, and my son has seen a few things over the years. Now I'm going to end this with a few EVPs. I don't still have the recordings because I feel they were negative in nature and cleansed my house afterwards. I felt to keep the EVP would confuse my intent in cleansing my house. The first one happened right after I started recording for my YouTube channel. It seemed to be very personal as it said, I miss you so much. Now, I had had a death in the family about two years before this. My nana, she died here. Well, both of my grandparents died in this house. But still, I don't believe it was her. The voice was female, but not only did it not sound like her, but she hated this house and pined for her late husband until her death. I would not want her to come back and I would hope she didn't. The second happened after I had been feeling very tired and started sleeping 10 to 15 hours a day. Now, I'm no stranger to depression, but anxiety is my problem, and it's my anxiety that triggers a bout of depression. And I hadn't been depressed when this started. Everything just seemed so off. Then I got the EVP. All it said was sleep. Both of these recordings could be heard and understood by the people I showed them to. And since I cleansed my house, I haven't got an EVP while recording since. Now that's the end of our moment together, my dear dreadfuls. I hope you enjoyed this first installment of strange encounters and unusual happenings. If you did, let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. And don't forget to share the story and check out the donation link in the description below. And if you have a true paranormal encounter, please send it also to the link below. Now remember, my little dreadfuls, don't be afraid of the dark. Be terrified of what is in it. Until next time.